he was always abrasive, honest, raw, provocative. He got made people very angry. Mordecai Richler is one of the most famous and polarizing figures ever in Canadian literature. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com and today we're speaking with Richler biographer Charles Foran about the man and to learn more about the surprising things he found out while he was writing Mordecai, The Life and Times. Let's start by having you explain to us who exactly Mordecai Richler was. Great Montreal novelist, provocateur, social commentator, critic, born in 1931, died in 2001, and in his day was certainly the leading and most uh, admired uh, Canadian novelist until his death, which was a bit premature. He was 70 years old when he died. What was his impact as an author? He wrote out of his own experience, he wrote out of his own uh, worldview, and also rooted, in, I think, in his identity as a, a Jewish Montrealer. And in his sense of himself as part of a larger tradition of Jewish diasporic Jewish writing, comedic writing, same, similar to Saul Bellow, Philip Roth, people who aren't really as much known or read by Canadians. So he, even though he's central to Canadian literature, he's also kind of off there on his own. Tell us about some of his most notable works. Richler's two greatest books are Salman Gursky was here and his final novel, Barney's Version. Barney's Version is probably the people's choice right now. And there's a movie coming out as well made from it. It's his warmest, most humane. Uh, it's about mortality. It's about an old man fighting Alzheimer's while maintaining his very fierce identity. It's lovely. And it is a, a good place to start with Mordecai Richler if you don't know his work. For me, Solomon Gursky is the greater novel and his greatest novel, even though it's more convoluted and complex as nine plots over 200 years. And it's a big, uh, challenging, exciting, funny novel that really inverts Canadian history. I read that he made Canada cool. Can you explain the sentiment? Canada for a long time, and maybe even today in some places like, say, New York, is considered a bit sleepy, a bit staid, a bit conservative. Canadians are nice. Mordecai Richler was not necessarily nice. What he was was always interesting. He was always combative. He spoke his mind. Well, I think there's um, very little excitement in Canada, and uh, it's a small country, and if you're an English-speaking Canadian, there's certainly no capital. The cultural capitals are either New York or London. You loved or you hated what Mordecai Richler said. Sometimes you loved his novels and you didn't like his journalism. Sometimes you loved his journalism and you didn't like his novels. You always had an opinion. What would you say is the most surprising thing you learned about Richler? It was, it was about the private man. It was about the fact that for his friends, for his children, for his wife, he was a gentle and decent man. He was a mensch. He was even called sweet by women who knew him. These are not words I associated with Mordecai Richler before I began this book, because I knew that public guy who was abrasive, who was intimidating, who could be a little abrupt, could be even rude, and was unapologetic. So to learn that this other man that was held so dearly by those close to him, that was the great revelation. And I had to, um, I had to in a sense, reconcile the two. And I ended up simply with what, what I think is just a portrait of a com complex personality, unresolved, full of conflict, comfortable with the contradictions, and that, of course, is terrific biographical material. Thank you very much. You're very welcome.